Developmental rubrics are tools which seek to assist students and teachers to overcome some of the common challenges faced in assessment. We can summarise these challenges into three general categories. Shifting student focus from the letter grades or percentages they receive on their work to the skills and understanding demonstrated in their work. Developing and understanding that skills can be improved with determination and persistence. Developing skills and resources to quickly and appropriately identify student achievement, making assessment more transparent for both teachers and students. Developmental rubrics look similar to their traditional counterparts, but also contain some unique features. Developmental rubrics focus on observable skills and are read vertically, showing skill progression from easiest to hardest. This order should clearly show which skills lead into each other, making it obvious for both students and teachers what the next step is to grow a particular skill or competency. For example, if a student is able to formulate incomplete questions, their next step may be to focus on developing complete questions, including conjugated verbs. With a score or grade mindset for feedback, teachers naturally look for round, neat numbers like 20 to grade with, and will often decide on a 5 by 5 criteria for convenience. However, not all skills require five levels of difference, or are not of an equivalent standard. For example, in a written task, applying correct spelling is unlikely to be of an equivalent difficulty to evaluating the effect of textual features on an audience. In order to match these skills to their equivalent pair, a process called pairwising occurs. In pairwising, teachers evaluate the criteria and seek to match equivalent pairs, which may produce gaps in the rubric. Developmental rubrics are in many ways messier to create but also more flexible for teachers because they focus on skill development and remove the need to organise assessment into neat, round numbers. Developmental rubrics seek to describe achievement based on observations, while removing subjective terms which may lead to confusion or disagreement. This applies to positive or negative attributes. Counts or pseudo-counts may look like this. Statements which follow this rule may look like This kind of language does not have a common definition, meaning that terms like good, excellent or outstanding can lead to inconsistency and disagreements in moderation, while also confusing students as to what exactly fantastic requires them to produce. Ambiguous or comparative terms may look like this. Statements which follow this rule could look like If a task requires steps or stages, including these in the rubric may imply that a student who reaches the end of the sequence has automatically demonstrated a skill to the highest level, when in reality, one student may complete all stages, but do so poorly, whereas another may only complete some steps, but do so to an exceptional standard. Developmental rubrics identify behaviours or skills as they are observed. For this reason, if a teacher is unable to observe a student's behavioural skill, it is presumed that there is insufficient evidence, and the student requires another or alternative opportunity to demonstrate the skill. Developmental rubrics start out from a firm belief that all students are capable of achieving and seek to highlight what they achieve as opposed to what they have not. Non-observable or negative descriptions may look like this. When multiple ideas are included in a criterion, it can become difficult to judge what should be selected if a student has achieved one element, but not the other. An example of multiple ideas may look like... Curriculum documentation often groups skills together under headings such as interacting, 
which may naturally organize abilities such as asking and responding together. However, this rule suggests that as far as possible, skills be split out so as to identify specific areas of achievement and growth. Human judgment and subjectivity will always play a role, which is why developmental rubrics are most powerful when co-constructed by the team who will be using them. Even with tried and tested, well-used rubrics, these work best when rigorously and regularly workshopped. This process is significantly easier when there is a template for a team to begin editing, adapting, and fundamentally, challenging which is why samples for the Australian curriculum can be obtained via the Goethe Institute. Developmental rubrics do not replace high quality teacher feedback, but rather support it, attempting to address the key challenges of assessment, encouraging student engagement with learning, developing a growth mindset, and providing effective and efficient feedback.